Okay, we wanted to um, call on a, a few of our Odyssey veterans uh, to just kind of spend a minute talking about who they are, where they work, and kind of what they do in Odyssey. Uh, I know we are running a little long, so I'm going to go jump right to Sarah. Sarah Seeger, our uh, resident uh, collaborator slash art uh, expert. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> can you just kind of introduce yourself and, and talk a little? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Sarah Seeger and I'm a Associate Director of Data Science at iQVIA. So I've been around for about two and a half years um, at iQVIA and when I joined iQVIA it also meant I joined Odyssey at the same time. Um, that basically was because the fact that I work uh, for Christian, which you probably all know and love, um, as well as working with Christian and Mui, which you guys will probably have heard of at some point. Um, so what do I do? Um, essentially, I lead a team of um, OMOP data scientists. Um, we run, uh, I run a, a service called the Productize Analytics um, Service, and that basically uh, comprises of um, uh, working on sort of the observational research and analysis, and we use our OMOP data assets that we have um, in-house at iQVIA. Um, how did I get involved? Well, like anyone else, I started off uh, when I first joined Odyssey, sort of getting involved in the tutorials online, um, attending the symposiums, which are awesome. Uh, go and do that if you haven't already. Um, I attend quite a few working groups as well. And also the big thing is that uh, with uh, my team, uh, we do actually um, collaborate with an awful lot of the network studies. Um, so what we're trying to do is obviously push our collaboration a bit more. Um, as I mentioned, I float a fair bit in a few working groups because I'm trying to, um, you know, see where we can help uh, the community a bit more. How can I assist you guys? Um, well, we've got a lot of experience. Um, we've we've worked on probably hundreds of different um, analytics and studies. Um, so we've got some lots of information and, you know, tips, hits, hints and tricks and everything that we can share. Um, and obviously we can help. Uh, with collaboration of other network studies too. And also, if you want any sort of personal um, Odyssey related artwork, I am your woman. <laughs> uh, so let me know. We can certainly attest to that. Uh, the, the artwork <laughs> she's done for the symposium has been a little phenomenal. Plug. <laughs> Let's, uh, thank you, Sarah. Let's jump to Greg, Greg Klebanoff. Greg, you want to talk a little bit about how you get your, your role with Odyssey? Sure. So, uh, hi everybody. My name is Greg Klobanov. I'm uh, the CTO at a, a relatively small company, IDC's Data Services. Uh, so, we've, we became involved with IDC um, over five years now. Wow. And uh, I attended second IDC Symposium, which I was really impressed by and really fell in love with this uh, community and the scale of research it does and got me infected with that. and. Ever since we've been trying to become more and more active in Odyssey, so our team, one of our core capabilities, our medical team, is helping out with uh, Odyssey uh, standardized uh, uh, vocabulary. So if you guys ever uh, uh, downloaded anything from Athena, that's uh, uh, a lot of work that we do there, and Athena is, is the tool that we support, one of them. Uh, I think a second uh, uh, major component that we uh, work together with our uh, great partners at uh, Jensen, uh, Anthony Thin and uh, Chris Now uh, specifically um, is has a tool called Atlas. Uh, again, we it's been a long journey for us to get this tool to 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 where it is today, and very proud of it in this collaboration. And uh, just a new release was uh, was was done uh, 2.8.0 just recently. So you're welcome to go and download it and use it in anger. Uh, so that's again again uh, another contribution that uh, we do, and uh, uh, we're also trying to become a bit more active and uh, helping out more time with Hades. So Adam Black is is, is getting involved more and more, uh, uh, and so uh, we're also involved in multiple uh, working groups. Again, working groups is a great way to to build partnerships, to to build your network. Guys, I welcome you to join. Uh, there are so many of them, and there are so many interesting people you can meet. So we're involved in working group, uh, uh, Melanie was uh, HR conversions. We have a working group focused uh, work with uh, uh, Maximin from the Hive and uh, uh, clinical trials, uh, working group, how to convert clin clinical trials. A lot of really working groups is all about uh, really interesting topics and how to converse or how to do certain things in the right way, basically. Um, uh, so I welcome you to, to join. There's a really great, fantastic working group that everybody must attend. It's called 
OM of CDM uh, working group. This is where the really the, the cooking the uh, the the CDM itself, and there is a lot of really fantastic people in debates. Sometimes hear it, and you're welcome to join. So that, anyway, uh, well, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of people in the IDC community that I think you can uh, uh, you can rely on. And IDC is quite open, so everybody is, is always happy to to help. There are different ways to to get us uh, reached, and MS Teams is one of them. Just ping everybody, and somebody will reply. There is forums, and of course the uh, sometimes personal emails that works as well. So uh, again, welcome and join the journey, journey, I guess. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Greg, and thank you for all the work that you do. Let's jump to Mui Van Zant. Mui, you want to take the floor? Yeah, hi, my name is Mui Van Zant. I'm a uh, senior director here at IQVIA, uh, like Sarah mentioned. Oh, there's an echo there. Um, like Sarah mentioned, I work for Christian as well, uh, and we work with her and Kristen as well in the Odyssey community. Um, my team here focuses merely on data management and the data conversions of many of the CDMs. Um, how did I join Odyssey? Uh, through Christian as well. When I, when I moved over to him, it, it became, hey, there's this community out there. Can you join? I said, sure. And I remember going to the first hackathon back, I don't know when it was that uh, we had a hack uh, in Georgia. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world because I got to meet so many new people as well as learn so many things about areas that I'm not a specialty in, uh, like the research side of it. And I remember specifically raising my hand and asking Patrick, how can we do this again? And Patrick's answer to me back then was, hey, just somebody needs to volunteer and set it up. So the next year, I uh, took that on and scheduled a hackathon at IQVIA uh, from a technology point of view, because that's where we were a strong suit. And from there, it's never really stopped. So how can I help you? Let me know, especially when it comes to things like organization of events or uh, what I'm currently working with is the uh, Asia Pacific team, like Craig has mentioned. Uh, I work with many of the Asia Pacific or um, chapters to ensure that the Asia Pacific team is starting to catch up uh, with what everyone else is doing. They would love to be able to contribute to more. They just need a little bit more guidance as to how to do things. So I'm uh, organizing all the APAC calls as well as we're going to do a lot of trainings over there. So if anyone wants to help us with training also, come find me and uh, through Teams, through email, through Skype, through whatever means you can think of, I have. WeChat, Kakao, Live, any of those. So that's really how we ca I can help here. Uh, I'll turn it back to you, Craig. Awesome. Well, again, thank you very much for all your leadership, uh, especially with the work with our APAC community. Last but certainly not least, Andrew Williams. Andrew, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Andrew Williams. I am a clinical psychologist by training and have had roles as a biostatistician and person building databases and applications for a while, and have been involved in Odyssey since nearly the start of Odyssey, not, not the OMOP level days, but shortly thereafter. And it has, um, I care passionately about the potential value that large scale data from EH sources can, can be used to improve our lives and improve care and, and change some of the most significant things that, that matter in, in life. And I, I have been, continually inspired by all the things that happen in the Odyssey community. The vision that has uh, ignited it from the beginning has been continually surprising in how, how uh, important and innovative and uh, really, I don't know, so some, of the, some of the most important work being done anywhere, I think. And so I'm involved in probably a, a couple too many different facets of, of Odyssey. I participate in a very large number of work groups, help to lead a couple of them. I'm not going to enumerate them all. Um, and along with Christian Reich and Kristen Koska and especially David Madigan, uh, helping to build a new Odyssey Center at Northeastern, which is hopefully going to be a new base of support for all kinds of wonderful activities for the entire community um, and a new new uh, whole set of researchers coming to be involved and enrich what we do. I do a fair amount that links Odyssey to other communities as well as to contributing to it directly. So I have a leadership role in the National COVID Cohort Collaborative 
where I'm shepherding a lot of work and bringing a lot of the fa fantastic people who've developed different attributes and assets in Odyssey to to that community to help help make the best use of their OMOPT data, a huge data resource for, for COVID. Um, and along with Wojciech Husser and people on Greg's team, uh, bringing in Mimic and people in the PhysioNet community, other other open sciences communities in general, the, to leverage the great work that that Odyssey has been done and increase collaboration with them. And then within Tufts Medical Center, where I have a both a research position and I help direct our informatics core and research informatics for Tufts Medical Center generally, um, we're getting a lot of value over having uh, put our data into OMOP form. Uh, we use that to participate in research, but also We've, you know, some of the more bleeding edge, but really exciting things that are happening in uh, oncology and and our ability to really carefully and and in a very detailed way specify and characterize cancer and cancer treatment in ways that can't be done anywhere else. Um, bringing in GIS data, a lot of other things. So uh, we're we're using that for a variety of purposes, including for Odyssey studies. So that's probably enough said about me. And welcome very much. This is a this is a great community. I got to say, there's, there's a I participate in a lot of communities, um, and this one is as open and full of fun and expertise and and productive work as any that you will find out there. So if you're new to the community, uh, don't be shy. Join in. You can you can take balls and run with them and uh, and have a big impact doing it. So welcome. Absolutely. Thank you again, Andrew. Uh, so we are we plan to do the second half of this as a as a Q and A. Obviously, we're closer to the three quarter mark. We do want to do some questions and answers. Uh, but anybody who has posted a question, we will try to find a way to answer. Maybe we'll make a forum thread, take all the questions that you've submitted to the poll, uh, and answer them all there. So if you don't get your question answered, uh, just just know that that we've seen it we're going to answer it we're going to put it on the forum that'll help drive you to the forum as well so uh patrick do you want to kind of get started yeah so uh, i'm looking at the responses everybody's put into the poll everywhere uh, pollev.com slash patrick ryan 800 uh and our top voted we got two top voted questions so i'm going to answer the first one and then i'm going to actually uh, call on Kristen costa to answer the second so the first one was where can I learn about databases that have adopted the OMOP CDM? And so for that, I'm actually going to share my screen real quick because there's one additional resource we didn't actually show you. And that is the uh, Odyssey Wiki page. Uh, and um, if you just Google Odyssey Wiki, you'll be brought to our Odyssey Wiki page. And you'll see on the left hand side, there are other resources. And this includes some hyperlinks to various lists of the data network. Uh, I'm specifically here on the page uh, that's the 2020 data network. The brief story here, and I'm going to paste that link into the chat for those who just want to get to it directly. The brief story here is, as I described our data network, it is completely a voluntary activity. What it means is that somebody has self-identified that they're willing to convert their data to the OMOP common data model, and that they're interested in running Odyssey tools and participating in studies. And as part of that, each year uh, we do an inventory to just ask the community who has data and would like to self-identify as being part of this network. And what this uh, wiki page represents is those people who have gone and entered in information that includes the name of their database, the type of data, the country, the number of patients, um, uh, as well as uh, contact information um, associated with those individuals. In total here, there's over 130 databases uh, distinct databases that are represented, as well as contact information for some of the collaborators. Uh, I think what's uh, exciting is that as much as we've got these people who have self-identified and representing over 600 million distinct patients around the world, that we know that this is actually only a small fraction of those that are, are using the OMOP CDM, some of which haven't actually just self-identified. But we encourage anybody who has access to data um, to come join and, and raise your hand and uh, participate as part of this network. Next question that was top voted, Kristen, I'm going to actually th throw it over to you. The question is stated simply, how do I start a new study? How do you start a new study? Why would you want to do that? We've answered everything you could ever want to answer. Now, actually, you're in good company. So starting a study starts with articulating your question, and you can do that here in Teams. 
you can do it on the forum. In fact, the forum is a great place to search and see questions people have asked. You can look under the researcher thread. I think that one tends to have quite a bit of historical memory. But if you can articulate what you want to do, folks like myself or maybe my friend Mark Souchard, even Patrick, Andrew, Sarah, we're lurking and we're looking for questions that look like questions we answer all the time. And then what you'll find is we have different kind of frameworks for the questions we ask. So you hear about this characterization, prediction, estimation. And so if you can kind of start with tell us what you want to do, we will help line you up to your, your friends. And it is a little bit of a back and forth where we might work with you to articulate your question further. We might point you to GitHub repos where we have existing artifacts. Uh, you might see me with long replies on the forum saying, hey, have you looked here or there or have you tried this? But what we want you to know is you're not starting from zero. In a lot of places, we have great phenotypes. Gautam and team mentioned this earlier. There's a lot of work curating that. There's a lot of great existing study packages that have been generated in COVID as well as through our legend uh, group. So by all means, we want you to take advantage of that and get a running start. So ask away. And now you know who I am. Find me on whatever platform you want. You can ping me and I'm happy to help be your uh, a, a wayfinder. Is that, is that what it is? Your shaman, whatever it is, the person that brings you up the mountain when you're getting to Everest, I'll do that for you. Very good. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, the next question that was voted that I was, how, how would I go about implementing clinical data based on the OMOP data model from scratch? Um, so as Greg mentioned, um, we have a uh, OMOP common data model work group where you can learn all about the standards. What I would specifically recommend uh, if you are someone who is holding on to patient level data and interested in joining the journey to, to do this is to start by reading the book of Odyssey and then to also uh, take a look at the free tutorial courses that are offered in the Eden Academy. Um, there's actually a, an entire line of classes that have been developed by various members of the community that go through the process of understanding the OMOP common data model, understanding how to work with the standardized vocabularies, going through the various open source tools that have been developed for the ETL process, including some, some fun tools like White Rabbit, uh, and uh, as, as well as data quality assessment tools that can help you make sure you've followed the process correctly. Um, so I'd certainly encourage you to consider the Eden Academy as your as your starting point because we've tried to map out the, the steps there. I'd also encourage you to start by raising your hands on the forums and in the Microsoft Teams just to say, hey, I'm new to the community and I've got this data source. Does does anybody um, can anybody uh, help me get started? Um, if it's a data source that other people might have access to, then there might actually be some some knowledge that can be gained and some some reuse of information that's already been developed within the community. And people are always uh, are very, very uh, eager to share the work that's been done. Uh, Craig, maybe I'll, I'll ask you to 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 to. Um, answer this one again. Uh, a couple of folks had still upvoted about where's the best place to start to learn about the Odyssey tools and how to how do I join a work group? Sure. Again, uh, if you go to odyssey.org, these the, the tabs on the on the top of the page will give you will direct you to a number of the places. So there is a specific software tools um, page that you can highlight and again we'll give you not only some basic information, but links to uh, documentation, demos, installation information, GitHub repository. So there, the, use the software tools page. We, we kind of re-put this together over the last couple of months, and I think it's uh, it's a lot clearer, a lot more helpful. Um, as opposed, also in terms of joining work groups, I did see a number of these questions asked in different ways. On um, in the link to this page on, on the community calls, I will repost these links. Um, so if you look for the February 9th community call, we'll have the links there. But again, under the collaborate with Odyssey and MS Teams on odyssey.org, there is a form to fill out for join our Teams environment. And then another, once you get in the Teams environment, you can start to join different working groups. Fill out the pick working group studies to join, uh, and you can list the specific studies, the specific chapters, um, and the specific working groups that you want to join. Uh, and then Elise Katzman does a great job kind of navigating you to, to all the places you want to be. If you have any troubles, reach out to the Odyssey technical support in Teams, uh, and then we can kind of 
help you get that those final steps. Very good. Thanks, Craig. Uh, the next top voted question out here on pollev.com slash Patrick Ryan 800 uh, says, I'm trying to use an Odyssey tool and I'm having a problem getting an error message. So what's the best way to solicit help, uh, help and how do I know who to contact? So there's two things that I'm going to recommend that you take a look at. The first is on the Odyssey forums, you'll see that there's a specific session section for implementers. And that's a place where we're trying to provide a, a user forum so that people can post questions and get answers. Um, you will see if you have some specific error question, you might actually find that somebody else has similarly experienced that error and may have uh, found a workaround. We've got several members of the community that are very active in trying to support each other. Specific shout out to Chris Knoll, who seems to be on at all hours trying to help everybody um, try to get through some of the issues. So I'd re really recommend that you use the Odyssey forums in the implementers uh, area to, to focus on that. But additionally, if you specifically are using a tool and you think it's actually outright has a bug, all of our tools are open source and the code is available in GitHub. So you go to github.com slash odyssey and you will find all of the packages. And there we use GitHub as our primary modality for capturing issues. And so if you have a specific issue, like here's a bug and here's the error message that I'm receiving, you can post it post it as an issue on, on GitHub and pe um, the developer uh, teams will be able to see that and, and, and respond to you. In general, if you're, if you're a, a, a newbie that's, asking a general question like how do I do this or have I done it right you'll probably find that the forums is a great place to get a more broader uh, representation of people thinking about things whereas if you're down in the weeds and you really do think that there's some functional problem with the code github is going to be your right place to to go to first point it out and hopefully also to, to, to contribute and uh, and work on these community solutions together Thanks to Elise for bringing this up. We, we've mentioned the Odyssey Symposium a number of times. I do want to get a couple of dates uh, on your calendar. The 2021 Odyssey Symposium will be September 12th to the 15th, with the main symposium day on Monday, September 13th. Now, what is it going to look like? Will it be in person? Will it be completely virtual? Will it be a combination? What are the topics? Those are all questions that we simply don't know yet. Um, we have a committee that that will work really hard to to put together another great symposium. Um, again, we don't know what format it will be, but we do know the dates. So September 12th to the 15th, uh, September 13th being the main day. If you haven't been to one, ask anybody who's been to at least one, and most people have been to a number of them. They're really wonderful days of, of not only idea sharing, but just community building, camaraderie. It's, uh, as, as people have mentioned, this is a really great community to be part of. Um, and we're hitting the end of the hour. Patrick, you want to make a couple of, of final remarks and then questions that we didn't get to? Uh, look for the forum. Look on the forum. We will find a way to answer these questions and uh, make you find the forum to, uh, to, to get your answers. Yeah, so I think definitely I think it would make good sense, Craig. We we do I do see that there's probably about a dozen or so questions that we didn't yet get to. So what we'll do is we'll make that a post on the forums and inside of Teams, uh, so that everybody can um, uh, so that we will respond to those questions. I guess just to summarize, though, I want to um, first of all welcome all of you that are newcomers to the community. Uh, I'm going to bring back up here our uh, the page that Craig showed you to join the journey. Um, you've taken an important and valuable uh, uh, step to join this call and learn a little bit more about this. And I hope that you found some of this information useful. Um, but I know that we've thrown a lot at you here to start with. Um, but we encourage you to, to become part of this community, uh, to join the forums, join our team's environment, join the work groups, uh, read, read and go through our trainings and then start to contribute. Uh, we know that we've heard from lots of communities that uh, there's a lot going on in Odyssey. It's really big and there's all these people all around the world. It's hard to sometimes know how one can make a contribution to something that seems like it's so big and going in so many different directions. And so I just want to share with you as a final vignette. It was basically last year, about 13 months ago, that Odyssey had an event in, in Barcelona, Spain, in a, and a newcomer, just like you all, came to that, that, that meeting, uh, Jenny Lane. 
Jenny came and she participated in a study thon. She she largely listened and learned and got excited and interested. Uh, that was only 13 months ago. And one month later, she found herself thrust into leading a large Odyssey study. And that was the study that ultimately is one of the seminal works that demonstrated that hydroxychloroquine increases the risk of cardiovascular risk in combination with azithromycin. Uh, uh, you can come join this community. You can join and listen and lurk. You can learn, but you can also make contributions. Contributions in data standards, contributions in open source development, contributions in study design and development. We're here to try to help you as be part of this journey, but we're also um, encouraging you to join the journey because we need you to come with your skills and talents and expertise uh, to make this community the success that it can be uh, in improving patients' health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that improves better, better care. Um, so I welcome you all to the community and I look forward to collaborating with all of you and look forward to seeing what you do on the journey ahead. All right, I know there's a lot of information. Recordings will be online shortly or just later today. Thank you again for, for joining and hopefully we will see you next week. Take care, Thank you, everybody. everybody. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, bye. -bye. bye, -bye.